stop the FOMO. Black Friday TV deals and holiday discounts have already started. And yes, my TV chart is back for 2024. So many TV models, so many features, so many prices. But which one would I recommend you buy this year? We'll cover the strengths and weaknesses of each of these TVs to help you narrow down your choices. Beginning with size, because TV immersion is the most important upgrade when considering getting a better TV. Generally speaking, from 7 feet away, 77 inch TV, 8 feet away, 85, 83 inch TV, and if you're more than 9 feet away, definitely consider a 98 inch TV. And that's where we'll start with the 98 inch TV sizes. Today's video is brought to you by WhoKeys. Trying to build a PC on a budget, but don't know where to buy your Windows software cheaply? WhoKeys to the rescue. Use my coupon code SF20 and immediate discount with a free upgrade to Windows 11. At the bottom of this order where it says code card, to the right is the product key you need to activate Windows. So copy this long number, then go to the Windows menu and click on settings. In the settings menu at the bottom, select update and security. Select activation, then select change product key, paste what you copied from WhoKeys, click next, click activate, and you're done. You can buy Windows 11 Pro or Office 2019 Pro with my discount code SF20. Yes, I've been using WhoKeys for the last several years on my own PC builds and it just works. Now before getting into the prices, a quick reminder, if you're considering a Samsung TV or soundbar, Samsung program offer members get the best deals. Go to the Samsung website, check out the list of available qualifying memberships, such as educators, first responders, military, government, and AAA Auto Club members. Also, if your employer is a participating corporation member of Samsung, then yes, you also qualify. Consistently, these offer program members get 15% less so already the best deal on Best Buyer Amazon, program members will be 15% cheaper. And if you happen to miss the deal that I posted a day or two ago, ask in chat. Tell me you're a program member and they will confirm, verify, and they will give you that deal more often than not. Okay, now on to the 98 inch TVs I buy. Beginning with the least expensive one that I still think is an amazing TV because I saw it in person compared to similarly priced TVs at a budget level. And I must say the Samsung 98 inch DU9000 currently just under $3,000. Now that is well worth it. In the past when it was four or five, six, I thought, okay, it's good but not $4,000 good, right? There are better TVs at that price, but at 3,000, suddenly you have my attention. Among TVs under 3,000, this is the one to get, although it's direct lit. It has all the gaming features, the image quality, the upscale to 98 inch performance algorithm that I love so much. When I saw it next to a <clears throat> competing TCL, I thought that this TV looked sharper, not because it was over sharpened, but their upscaling algorithm for a 98 inch size worked really well. Everything else about it works for gaming. It has 120 hertz, Game Motion Plus, many of you love. This is the one I would go as an all around TV. Gaming, TV watching movies. Now it is a little bit weak in terms of HDR performance because it's direct lit. It's for about $1,000 more. We're talking $4,000. The TCL QM7, 98 inch gets you that HDR performance, right? Deeper black levels, better contrast, HDR specular highlights. That's the one I would get for $4,000. But if you're saying, oh, what if you want both? You want gaming performance, you love the Game Motion Plus, and you want HDR. And now you're going to have to pay a little bit more. We're talking about the Samsung QN90D, 98 inch for around $14,000 and it still falls a little bit behind OLED total image quality in terms of infinite contrast. But here's the good news. For an extra 4,000, because I figure, you know what, you're already shopping the $14,000 budget. What's well, another 4,000 to $18,000 even, and you get yourself a 97 inch G2 OLED TV. Low latency, gaming performance, infinite contrast, definitely bright enough at this size. This is the Unicorn TV for 97, 98 inch shoppers, but it is $18,000. But these are the 98 inch TVs I would consider before any other models out there right now. 
But with the new TV, you may also want to consider a soundbar and the right HDMI cables, beginning with the soundbar. Right now, the only soundbar I would consider because both, it's a great deal and it performs like a flagship soundbar, the Samsung Q990C. Now, this was last year's flagship best soundbar from Samsung. It continues to be sold this year. Now, although the Q990C is last year's model, this year is the Q990D, the differences are minimal. They even look the same, except the price. The 990C last week was dropped to under $700 for offer program members. Now, currently, it's still available on Amazon, but it's closer to $1,000. Still an amazing deal for the best soundbar you can get for under $1,000. But if you can get the offer program deal, it's under $700. And what about HDMI 2.1 cables? Many ask, FOMO, what is it you use personally? What do you recommend? I have two ways to go about it. First, how long do you need the cable? For shorter runs up to 10 feet, less than 10 feet approximately, I'd say go with copper. They're inexpensive, they work well, and they're not too thick and heavy. For copper runs less than 10 feet, I consistently use cable matters. As a matter of fact, I'm using these right now. They're inexpensive, right? I think a three pack is between $20 and $30, depending on the length you need. I run nine to 10 feet lengths. Three pack, $30, $10 each. Boom, they work well. They're not too thick. They're pretty reliable. I haven't had any problems with them yet, and I've been using them for a few years now. Now, for longer lengths of cable, you have to go with optical. So longer than 10 feet, optical, this is why. Two reasons. First, copper gets way too thick above 10 feet. More importantly, copper at longer lengths puts a strain on your HDMI port. One, physically, because it's heavier. You don't want that physical stress. But secondly, and this is very subtle, longer lengths of cable demands more power from your HDMI bus on your TV. That's not good. It overheats that bus. Best to go with optical, which takes a little bit less energy. So for me, optical runs longer than 10 feet. I have been using Rui Pro for the longest time, since 2019. And quick disclosure, yes, they've been a sponsor of my channel in the past, but I continue to use them. They are my favorite brand. And more importantly, I recommend them to my friends and family. With that in mind, good optical cables are not cheap. They're between $75 and $120, depending on the length and whether you need them to be CL2 in wall rated. And if you're interested in getting any of these products and any of these TVs I mentioned in this video, I have listed all of them below. It is linked in the video description below, so you can take your time to study the chart, look at the different specs, and ask questions in the comments below. Now, looking at this chart, going from left to right, beginning with the budget, right? You look at what you can afford, under 1,000, one to 2,000, and of course, over 2,000 for those with a nice job. Then you get to different sizes, the price points of each of these TVs, the brand, the model, and the product link if you're interested in buying any of these TVs, but I'm gonna hide it for now to make it easier to see. And the panel type, you either have LCD TVs, which there are mini LED and non-mini LED LCD TVs, and OLED, either W OLED or QD OLED. Then we have the brightness. I ranked it from one to three, three being the brightest. Sometimes you get a three plus because it's really bright, but three is normally very good. And it's very hard to distinguish between three and three plus depending on the content, one being the least bright, but on this list. This is not an absolute scale, just kind of relative to each other. Same with HDR impact, three giving you the best in class HDR impact, one really being mostly for SDR. And then we have a ranking for gaming, specifically console gaming. We're not talking PC gaming because that's a whole different thing. But for console gaming, you'll go from average to good to better to best. Good means, you know what? It looks pretty good, right? Better means they have amazing features I think console gamers will benefit from, like really good motion interpolation to make 4K60 look like 4K 120, Game Motion Plus, for example, on the Samsung TVs, and then Best, right? So now you're talking really low latency, all the features, all the bells and whistles. Next is key strengths and best use case. So I listed the three or four things that I think make these TVs special for your use case, and then the weaknesses that you should be aware of in case you're wondering what makes these TVs flawed, if there is any, right? So everyone cuts corners. Remember, there is no perfect TV. So these are the noticeable weaknesses that I think the TV may have, but ultimately it's always compromises. You have to choose your poison. All right, let's get into this list. 
Now, at the 48 to 55 inch size, $700 to $800, the LG 48 inch B4 is my bedroom TV choice. It's a bit smaller, but it's OLED after all. The infinite contrast is amazing, and it's definitely good enough for gaming. Now, it's not HDR gaming, but definitely performs like a gaming TV should. Again, perfect for bedroom watching. Not super bright. The lights are dim, if not off completely. And that's great because if it's too bright, you're not going to fall asleep. So again, its only weakness really is HDR impact and brightness, which I don't think is too relevant for a bedroom TV. Now, if you do want the HDR impact and brightness, but are willing to give away some of that gaming console madness, the TCL QM7 really does it all. Brightness is a three. HDR impact is a three. I mean, this is... And I'm going to tell you right now, here is a spoiler. This is my TV editor's choice, the TCL QM7. I haven't made that video yet, but I am so impressed by the performance of the QM7 given its price point, and it doesn't change here. At around $700 to $800, possibly less than $700 by the time Black Friday to the holiday discounts roll around probably likely under $700, right? Because I know the 65 inch was $700 just a few weeks ago, it went up again, but I expect that to be also cheaper. But regardless, this QM7, quite the banger for the price, especially if HDR is your thing. Now it's gaming features, eh, it's okay, it's good, but it's not as sophisticated as the B4, but this is an HDR movie watcher's dream. Highly recommended at the 55 inch size, definitely below $700, it's a buy. Now, 65 inches, right, at this value level, between 800 and 1,000, QM7 is still there, and you can get the QM7 65 inch, probably 700, maybe a little less, definitely worth that price. QM8, so here's the difference. The QM8 and the QM7 are identical in every way for most content. Biggest difference being the QM7 audio is a little bit louder, a little bit better, and when you get to the brightest content, it will show that with better tone mapping and you'll see that brightness in the specular highlights. But between that super bright scene, right below that, let's say up to 1500 nits, I dare say the QM7 and the QM8 are indistinguishable. And that's why I like the QM7 so much. But the QM8 for $1,000, I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. No Samsung, no Sony, no LG for a thousand bucks will come even close to the QM8. Now, what comes close is the Hisense U8N, which is about the same price as the QM8, possibly $100 cheaper, depending on when you see the deals. And the U8N, to me, is that poor man's Bravia 9. Shadow detail is one of the best that you'll find at this price, better than the QM8. Although its bright level specular highlights are a touch behind the QM8, and its specular detail is a touch behind the QM8, its shadow detail is more accurate. Color out of the box to me is a little bit more accurate. Skin tones is more like Sony skin tones. So I like the U8N for those who want the Sony Bravia 9, but simply can't afford it. Both of these TVs, highly recommended. And for $1,000, you're not going to get a better TV at this price. Now, 75 inches for around 1000 QM7. Need I say more, right? Great TV all around. 85 inches, you're going down to the TCL Q6, which is not mini LED. It doesn't have that impact and contrast of mini LED, but it's definitely good enough, especially at this size. I mean, if you only could afford, let's say, a 65 inch QM8 or go 85 inch with a Q6, if you're coming from a much older TV, go with the Q6. I think you will notice the improvement in image quality, but that size you're not going to go back. Now, if you're coming from a really good LCD TV, let's say the Samsung Q90R at 65 inches, you might have to go with a Q the QM7 at least, because you'll notice that drop in contrast in the Q6. But again, a five-year-old LCD TV, go with the Q6, enjoy that immersion. And the Hisense U6N will give you slightly better HDR impact, slightly better contrast, but it's a different TV because those who need that brightness go with the U6N. But the Q6 in its own right is a good TV. But let's say you've been wise with your money. You have a little bit of money left in the bank, between 1000 to 2000 to spend on a slightly better TV. These are the ones I would buy at the 55-inch size. LG B4 OLED. Great starter OLED. Not super bright, but bright enough. And of course, it has the gaming chops. Not great for HDR gaming, because again, it lacks that HDR impact, but everything is there. 
the infinite contrast, the specular highlights, just not quite as bright as the S90D or the G4, which is a bit more expensive. Or you can go up and get more impact with the S90D. Similar price, around $1,250. Personally, I take the S90D. Now you're asking, wait, then why is the B4 there? Well, if you need Dolby Vision, many of you, I want Dolby Vision, LG B4 is there for you. Personally, I get the S90D because I don't think Dolby Vision makes a big difference, but I acknowledge and respect your opinion. If you want Dolby Vision, then I get the B4 just for that. But personally, forget it. Get the S90D and enjoy everything that QD OLED offers. HDR impact, color volume, color luminance, amazing gaming performance. The S90D, 55 inches around 1250, that's the TV I would get for sure. Now, the 65-inch size, you're going up $1,300 to $1,600 budget. It's a little bit more, but you get more size. I would choose the S90C if it's still available. Great price currently. It's the best in class. Last year, this year, it's right there with the best. I mean, it's just short of the G4, the S95C, the S95D, but it's so close that only reviewers will notice the difference. Highly recommended if you can get it at Samsung.com or the Samsung S90D, this year's version, slightly brighter, definitely slightly better image processing and tone mapping, but for most people, it looks very similar. But the S90D, also recommended, and if you need Dolby Vision, well, you have the LG C4. Again, if you're willing to give up Dolby Vision, please take the S90D, or if you need HGIG, LG C4 obviously does it. It has an actual HGIG label. With the Samsung TVs, you're going to have to try to figure out, wow, is static close enough to HGIG? You know, there's a lot of guessing of what and where and how HGIG works on the Samsung. But ultimately, if you need Dolby Vision and that HGIG label, you have the C4 at this price point. The QN90D, so why is it here? Many of you don't want an OLED for whatever reason, but you want a really good mini LED. Well, 1300 to 1600, the Samsung QN90D nails it. Great gaming features, one of the best gaming features at a mini LED. But if you want Dolby Vision and mini LED at this price point, Sony Bravia 7. You trust the name. You don't want to go with TCL or Hisense. I get it. So you're going to pay a little bit more. That's Sony tax. Get the Bravia 7. It's essentially the X95L from last year, now called the Bravia 7. Not quite as good as the Bravia 9, but your budget's only $1,600. Bravia 7, it's got Dolby Vision. It's got good enough gaming, not quite to the level of the Q90D, but you know what? You're not a super console gaming enthusiast. You just want a TV that does a little bit of everything with some of that cinema motion quality. Bravia 7 nails it. But if you want bigger, 75 to 77 inches, under 2,000, Samsung S90D is going to be very close to 2,000, if not right at 2,000. Definitely check the Samsung Offer program over the course of the next few weeks. I think it will drop to $19.99 just like it did last year for the S90C at around this time. So the, the S90D at 77 inches at $19.99, an amazing deal. And the 77 inch size was the first to go at this price by spring. So something to keep in mind. And again, the LG B4, also around 2000 by the time Black Friday rolled around. Why is it here? You want a $2,000 Dolby Vision OLED? Here it is again. I don't know. I don't think it's worth it, but many of you need it, so it's here. And for those who need mini LED at around this price point, the Samsung QN85D, also under 2000 highly recommended for HDR impact and some gaming chops. Now, at 85 inches, a QM7 is under $2,000, also recommended, and it's large, or the QN85C will be just under 2000 if it's still available. So those TVs are recommended. Now the QM7 will have more HDR impact, better specular highlights, but its gaming features will be a step below the Samsung. Samsung has got a little bit of everything, but it doesn't have Dolby Vision. So HDR impact with Dolby Vision, go with the TCL QM7. More gaming features or better implemented gaming features, you're okay with the specular highlights dropping a notch, go with the QN85C. But let's say you got yourself your year-end bonus and you're going to blow it all on a TV. Over $2,000 budget, you say, we'll start at the 65-inch size. The Samsung QN95D will be around $2,200. Check Value Electronics. They're one of the very few retailers that sell the QN95D. This is going to be a great price. 
Now, its specular highlights won't match all the TVs, but everything else about it as a mini LED is phenomenal. As a matter of fact, it matched the Bravia 9 at the shootout, so this is a great Bravia 9 alternative if you're okay with no Dolby Vision, which I am. And it has great gaming features for a mini LED TV. Although its audio is not great, I recommend getting a soundbar with it like the Q990C. If you get the Bravia 9, you will get most of that audio without a soundbar. But the Bravia 9 is a bit more expensive. What would I get? You know me, I don't need Dolby Vision. I will get the Samsung S95D. As a matter of fact, I have it over there. Love that TV. That's my choice of the 65 inch size above 2000. So you can probably get it for around 2700 at Samsung Offers Program. I'm a AAA member, so boom, I get that great price. But definitely the S95D is my favorite 65 inch TV of the year as far as pure image quality is concerned. And many of you ask, wait, what about the anti glare, anti reflection? So I have light controlled room doesn't matter to me. It's perfect for a light controlled room. Now in a room where bright lights is a problem, it depends. That anti-glare could be great or it could be bad. You're gonna have to bring it home to see how you like it in your room. Super bright points of light really does not look good on this TV, but just general ambient lighting that's not too bright, the anti-glare does great to keep the reflections off that screen. Nevertheless, the S95D is one of my favorites, if not my favorite 65 inch TV cost no object of 2024. And just remember, off angle, it looks great because it's an OLED, whereas the QN95D off angle will not look as good as the Bravia 9. The Bravia 9 is among one of the best off angle LCD TVs out there. But if you're off even a bit further than 25 degrees, definitely consider an OLED TV. Now, moving up in size, right? 77 inch, cost no object, S95D is $3,900. Again, we're not talking value here. We're talking the best of the best. The S95D offers a few things the S9D doesn't. First, it's a one connect box. You're paying a premium for that convenience. It's thinner, which means the audio kind of sucks. You will have to get a sound bar with the S95D or the S90D, frankly. And more importantly, anti-glare. You're paying a bit more for the anti-glare, but do you need it? Most people I think would enjoy the S90D or the king of TVs, the Sony A95L. This is Sony's best TV. It's most expensive TV in 2024. It's close to $5,000 and well, king of TVs, right? You're paying that premium, you're paying for that label. All three of these TVs, in my opinion, are among the best you can get at 77 inches. QD OLED has uniformity, way better uniformity than W OLED from LG. That's just an unfortunate fact. But at the 83 to 85 inch size, the LG G4 does make an appearance because literally probably the best image quality at this size you can buy. And the price shows it's $5,700, right? If you don't have quite $6,000, but you're willing to pay for the best, we have some great options. Beginning with Samsung QN90D at around $2,700. I think it can drop to 2,000 by the end of the year. So keep an eye out for those deals. At 2000, definitely the Q90D, 85 inches, highly recommended. Now the Samsung S90C really is a W OLED. So don't let the word Samsung and S90 fool you. It's an 83 inch W OLED, very similar to the LG B4. The question is, is the LG B4 worth 3,500? Or more appropriately, is Dolby Vision worth the extra seven, $800 if you can get the B4 for under 3000, go for it. Otherwise, I take the S90C and the savings because the image quality is so close. I understand the B4 might have HGIG, Dolby Vision. These are features that you want badly, fine. But if you're just streaming, you want great OLED image quality, right? W OLED, both of them, start with the Samsung S90C and see if you like it. I think you will. But if you don't want OLED and you want the best mini LED TV money can buy this year, cost no object, the Bravia 9. Sony Bravia 9, around $4,800 between now and the end of the year, possibly a little less. Highly recommended. I love this TV. This has HDR impact. It has the best tone mapping out there. Gaming is definitely good enough, especially for PS5 gamers. It's Bravia 9, very good mini LED TV. So on this list, I would start with the G4, right? That's my choice, just overall image quality, everything, gaming aside. If you want gaming as well, it's a no-brainer. The G4, $5,700, great budget. If you don't want to spend more than $5,000, I have no problems with the Bravia 9 
or any of the other OLED options. So if there's a future TV model I didn't list and you're wondering why, let me know in the comments below. But remember, these are the TVs I would buy. So if I didn't list it, most likely I wouldn't consider buying it myself. Until next time, stop the FOMO and enjoy your TV buying season.